This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to worship here at the Presbyterian Church in Morristown on this second Sunday of Advent. A few brief reminders. At 11 o'clock this morning, we will hold a congregational meeting on Zoom for the purpose of approving virtual meetings and electing a new class of elders and deacons. Second, there is still time to support PCM through your 2021 pledges. Please see the stewardship section of the website for more information. And finally, we will be celebrating communion together later in this service. So I invite you to have your bread and cup at the ready. Now let us move into worship with the lighting of our second Advent candle. Come, O light of the world, shine in the darkness. The days are coming when God shall raise up a righteous branch. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. The truth is not in us. But when we confess our sins to God, we can begin to receive that grace and love that has come to us in Jesus Christ. So first, let us confess our sins together in the prayer found in your bulletin, and then let us have a time of silent confession. Let us pray. Holy Messiah, you come to us offering a life-changing, world-altering way of being but we are ill-prepared to welcome you into our lives. We stubbornly cling to the ways we know and shroud our vision with too small expectations. We grow impatient with waiting for the world to change while failing to see our part. We walk around a neighbor in need rather than encounter a chance for compassion. Forgive us, merciful Savior, and grant us assurance that the glory of your coming and the advent of your kingdom do not depend upon the righteousness of your followers. Forgive us and free us to try again. Amen.
Every valley is lifted up, every mountain made low. Now the the glory glory of the Lord Lord is revealed, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks Thanks be to God. Good morning. Last week, I was wearing a necklace that said Emmanuel, and that meant God with us. And so this week, I'm wearing another necklace, and this one says Messiah. And this is also a name for Jesus, just as Emmanuel is. So Messiah means Savior. So Jesus is the Messiah because he was sent by God to save us from our sins. Many prophets in the ancient days would talk about the coming of the Messiah. So people would look for signs to know when the Messiah was going to be here. We know from the Bible that a big bright star was over the stable where Jesus was born. And that was a sign for the shepherds to know where Jesus was. We also know that when John baptized Jesus, the voice of God was heard saying, this is my son, the beloved. That was a sign. And Jesus performed many miracles, healing the sick, curing uh, the blind, calming the storms. Those were signs. Jesus was born, died, and resurrected. And those were all the signs that show us that he is the Messiah, our Savior. Let us pray. Dear Lord, as we wait to celebrate Jesus' birth, help us to see the signs of your love for us. Help us to show that love to others and to keep watchful for when Jesus will come again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please join us in our prayer for illumination. Holy God, our hope and strength, by the power of your Spirit, prepare the way in our hearts for the coming of your word, so that we may see the glorious signs of your promise fulfilled. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of Mark. Jesus went on with his disciples to the village of Caesarea Philippi, and on the way he asked his disciples, Who do the people say that I am? And they answered him, John the Baptist and others, Elijah and still others, one of the prophets. He asked them, But who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, You are the Messiah. And he sternly ordered them to not tell anyone about him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We have stepped into Advent, a season of waiting, at the close of a year that has involved an awful lot of waiting. Waiting through the spring for the lifting of stay-at-home orders and the easing of restrictions. Waiting for a haircut. Waiting to see beloved family and friends waiting to be free to travel again safely, waiting to gather together in our sanctuary again, waiting anxiously for test results for yourself or someone you love, waiting for someone who is sick to get well, waiting for a vaccine, waiting through the fear, the uncertainty, the frustration, the constant change in need for adaptation waiting to see what tomorrow will bring, waiting still through this second wave. Today we take a look at Jesus as Messiah, the Anointed One. And the name of Messiah has always had a lot to do with waiting. Over the course of several hundred years, Israel endured conquest, exile, and occupation by first the Assyrians, then the Babylonians, and finally the Romans. They watched their beloved Davidic monarchy crumble, in spite of God's promise of eternal kingship for the house of David. They lost their nation state, their power, their land, their self-determination as a people. They experienced the destruction of the first temple and then arduously rebuilt a second. They bent to the force of their occupiers and found ways to adapt and survive. Through it all, they waited. They waited with hope for the promised Messiah, the one who would act under the guidance and with the power of God. And as tends to happen with prolonged waiting, 
the people of Israel gradually built up a fairly specific set of expectations about who this Messiah would be. First and foremost, the Messiah would be an ideal king who would restore the house of David to its rightful throne. He would have the political power to free Israel from foreign occupation and to rebuild a righteous nation. He would save Israel from its enemies and wipe away all that was wrong with their world. At times, the prophets envisioned a slayer of the wicked. At other times, a prince of peace who would gather Israel into a new order of harmony, peace, and wholeness. The Messiah would be a true shepherd of the people and an authentic servant of God. The trouble with expectations is that they tend to shape what we perceive and what we are willing to accept. Jesus knew this. He knew all the heavy expectations attached to the title Messiah. And perhaps this is why in the passage we read today, he tells Peter to be silent after he recognizes Jesus as the Anointed One. Perhaps Jesus doesn't want to engage people's preconceived notions about who he is and who he is called to be, because then their understanding of his mission and ministry would be too limited, too narrow. Jesus is the Messiah, the truest shepherd of God and the most authentic servant. But he lives out his calling in a way that defies all expectations. He simply does not fit into a nationalist political box. He has come not simply to restore the Davidic kingdom, but to usher in the ultimate kingdom of God. He leads not at the head of a hierarchy, but by flipping that traditional hierarchy on its head. As a king, Jesus does not sit on a lofty throne, but walks among the last and the least. He rules not through power and might, but through humble service and nonviolence. He challenges religious complacency and empty ritual in favor of a deep, life-changing connection with God and a commitment to doing God's justice. He proclaims release to the captives, good news to the poor, and healing for the sick and the outcast. He devotes his life even to the point of suffering and death, not just to the salvation of Israel, but to the salvation of the entire world. Jesus is the Messiah, the hope, the promise fulfilled. He just shows us that God's vision for what that means far outstrips our own. Jesus desires still to defy all of our expectations because in reality, our thoughts and expectations of him as Messiah are usually still too small, too narrow. Walter Brueggemann writes of Advent that this season invites us to awaken from our numbed endurance and our domesticated expectations, to consider our life afresh in light of new gifts that God is about to give. This year in particular has become about survival, about a numbed endurance of our pandemic reality. Our dreams these days largely circle around a return to what was. We hope merely not to have lost ground from where we were before last March. After all, things were going pretty well for us as a congregation at that point. We worry that if we can't get back to normal soon, that these pandemic months will cost us more than we can bear. Our children, our budget, our momentum, our growth as a congregation. And when that worry rules us, 
our expectations of what God is doing here among us automatically narrow. Unconsciously, we limit ourselves and our walk with Jesus, our Messiah, to what came before, believing that the best is always behind us instead of somewhere out ahead, perhaps not just beyond this pandemic, but somehow through it. To an extent, the Israelites of old fell into the same trap. They were hoping for a return to the glory days of David, a reclaiming of what was, the restoration of Judah and Jerusalem to what they were before conquest. But Jesus as Messiah offers the possibility of so much more than numbed endurance, than mere survival, than the idea that our best is behind us needing to be reclaimed. Advent encourages us to once again wait for Jesus as the Messiah, who changes everything, who ushers in something completely new and so much better than anything that came before, anything we could possibly imagine. The kingdom of God, after all, has not yet reached its completion. And the amazing reality of that coming day outstrips our wildest imaginings. Messianic hope has always been hope in the long game, that whatever our current reality, God is not done with us yet. And if we follow our Messiah's leading, look around us through Jesus's eyes and walk among those he favored, we will see that God has planted us in the middle of such a plentiful harvest. There is rich potential in this time and new gifts to be found. The need for good news has never been greater. We live in a sea of weary, battered souls longing for something more satisfying than comfort foods, alcohol, bubble baths, or the latest Netflix binge. The rise in mental health struggles calls for more access to professional help, but also for a collective pursuit of spiritual deepening, of tapping into the peace-filled reserves of God and the practice of prayer. We may be struggling right along with our neighbors, but we know the sustaining power of God, and that is our good news to share. The world also needs the justice and reversed priorities of the kingdom more than ever. Food banks are serving record numbers across our nation at the same time that the stock market is hitting record highs. That means a privileged few are amassing millions at the same time that millions have lost their livelihoods. Our country locks more people away in prisons than any other nation in the world. Racial injustice continues to rule the day. And we are devouring natural resources and polluting God's creation at an alarming rate. Opportunity absolutely surrounds us to live into the priorities of our Messiah. Good news for the oppressed, release for the prisoners, comfort for the afflicted, renewal and healing. The possibilities before us are limitless. If only we will boldly step more and more into our calling. Jesus stands ready to defy our expectations as he always has. So let's not limit him or ourselves. Instead of looking behind us in fear or projecting our anxieties out into the future, may we ground ourselves in the hope of Advent, the hope of Messiah and of promises fulfilled, and look ahead to all that we trust 
God has in store for us. Amen. All who put their trust in Jesus Christ are invited and encouraged to partake of this, his holy table. On the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and he broke it and he said, take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner also he took the cup and he said, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. As often as you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you show forth his death until he comes again. Men and women will come from the north and the south and the east and the west to partake of this, his holy table. He invites us. Let us pray. Merciful and loving God, we thank you for the gift of this sacrament. We ask, Lord, that you would set it apart from a common to a sacred use, that these elements will nourish us, that will remind us that your love for us is this profound. Thank you for the gift of the baby born in Bethlehem, for this time of Advent, anticipating that time, and for the gift it is of your grace, your love, and your hope. So be with us now as we partake of these elements together. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And Jesus took bread and he broke it. And he said, take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he took the cup and he said, this cup is a new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for the remission of sins. As often as you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you show forth his death until he comes again. Let us pray. Almighty God, who has long sought us and mercifully redeemed us, thank you, Lord, that we are renewed by this as we anticipate the coming of Jesus. We live in a time of challenge and conflict as he did. Grant us hope and faith as we face the challenges and conflicts that lie ahead. We pray for our nation and world as we continue to live through this pandemic. As the numbers rise of those who are suffering and dying, be with the medical professionals, emergency workers, and those who daily provide services for us so that our lives can go on. Thank you for their courage. Grant them strength because all of this has become so exhausting. We pray for the family of Florence Anderson who died. Thank you for Florence's life and be with her family in their grief, but also in their remembering of their love for her. In these moments of silence, we offer prayers to you for those who are struggling, those who are lost, those who are lonely, those who need direction. Lord, we offer these silent prayers now. Thank you, Lord, as we share in communion. We are always reminded of your love through it. That when the time was right, Jesus graced this life with his birth, his teachings, his parables, his example, his death, and his resurrection. This we remember every time we share in communion. This we anticipate in these weeks of Advent. We offer this prayer in the name of Jesus who taught us a prayer saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. go from wherever you are with the love of our Lord Jesus Christ, the grace and peace of God, and the power and communion of the Holy Spirit surrounding you and guiding you this day and always. Amen. <laughs>